When I was a kid, the disaster we worried about most was a nuclear war. That's why we had a barrel like this down in our basement, filled with cans of food and water. When the nuclear attack came, we were supposed to go downstairs, hunker down, and eat out of that barrel. <laughs> Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. Now, part of the reason for this is that we have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence, but we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready. For the next epidemic, let's look at Ebola. And a large epidemic would require us to have hundreds of thousands of workers. There was no one there to look at treatment approaches,、uh, no one to look at the diagnostics, no one to, to figure out what tools should be used.、Uh, but that was never tried. So there was a lot that was missing, and. These things are really a global failure. The WHO is funded to monitor epidemics, but not to do these things I talked about. Now, in the movies, it's quite different. There's a group of handsome epidemiologists <laughs> ready to go. They move in, they save the day, but that's just pure Hollywood. The failure to prepare could allow. The next epidemic to be dramatically more devastating than Ebola. About 10,000 people died, and nearly all were in the three West African countries. There's three reasons why it didn't spread more. The first is there was a lot of heroic work by the health workers. They found the people and they prevented more infections. The second is the nature of the virus. Ebola does not spread through the air. Third. It didn't get into many urban areas, and that was just luck.、Uh, if it had gotten into a lot more urban areas,、uh, the case numbers would have been much larger. So next time we might not be so lucky.、Uh, you can have a virus where people feel well enough while they're infectious that they get on a plane or they go to a market. The source of the virus could be a natural epidemic like Ebola, or it could be bioterrorism. And so there are things. That would literally make things a thousand times worse. In fact, let's look at a model of a virus、uh, spread through the air、uh, like the Spanish flu、uh, back in 1918. So here's what would happen: it would spread throughout the world very, very quickly, and you can see there's over 30 million people die from that epidemic. So this is a serious problem. We should be concerned. But in fact, we can build. A really good response system. We have the benefits of all the science and technology that we talk about here. We've got cell phones to get information from the public and get information out to them. We have satellite maps where we can see where people are and where they're moving. We have advances in biology that should dramatically change the turnaround time to look at a pathogen and be able to make drugs and vaccines that fit for that、uh, pathogen. So we can have tools, but those tools need to be put into an overall global health system. 